Do, oh, I, I got the XH1. You do. Ah, all right. Well, you don't have to do it. I'm. Oh, wow. What's, what's, what's the shutter? It feels so different. It is. It's, it's actually uh, uh, Whoa. much better in terms of... Uh, it, 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 there's, no, there's no shutter shock. This, this is very... Whoa. Buttery smooth. It's nice. It's nice. nice. Hello everyone, this is Take from MegaTaco.com and I'm here with Billy the Fuji guy. Hey Billy! Hello! Let's do the, the thing there. <laughs> so we are um, in my studio. Billy, you just came from Calgary. I came from Calgary. We did a little short screening yes. with the camera store. Uh, a little nice uh, short video uh, of a wooden Nichols film. Beautiful! That was about the X-H1. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was a, an incredible launch, the fact that, you know, let's take this camera to an extreme and see what it can handle. Yeah. Uh, colors are great. Obviously, there's a lot of production and value involved in yeah. that. And, uh, you know, definitely a, a, a camera to think about. It is, <laughs> definitely. And, and that's why I have Billy on here. Actually, I watched your live show with uh, Chris and Jordan. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, guys, I'm not going to repeat what they did. Because they picked on a few things that they wanted to focus on, right. and they tease you. I think Chris is just teasing you. Absolutely. He's you just... Know, he's Chris like, and I, were, we, we go way back, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, I love working with, with the guys at yeah. the camera store. Yeah. Uh, they, they say it as it is, and yeah. that's the way it is. And, uh, and, and Jordan, I, and you finally made Jordan's day. He was just <laughs> kind of giggly because, you know, he is the video guy. Yes. And, and, and so for him, this is, I guess, finally the one camera he, he's really, really excited to, I guess, test it against the big boys. The Sony A7S Mark yeah. II, the GH5S, yeah. and, and this. And then they're all different sensor sizes, which is funny. Micro Four Thirds, full frame, and this kind of sits right in right the middle. In between. It's a yeah. sweet spot for size, weight, pricing. It is. I mean, the X-H1, you know, it's a high-performance piece. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is a great stills camera. You know, with some added functionality for video. So, yeah. you know, we, we were obviously uh, 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 addressing some customers who want a camera that's more durable, more robust. Definitely uh, feels more great, robust. great performance. Yeah. And, uh, you know, potentially down the road, too, we've just, you know, punched in some extra video features. And, and going from there, we brought color science to the video side of things. So, yeah. uh, Fuji's Eterna Film Simulation, of course, is... Uh, you know, one of my favorite uh, new features of this camera, I know it doesn't sound like a hardware thing, but, you know, colors to me are, you know, especially for the video side of things, it's quite amazing. And, and uh, looking at some of the content that other uh, countries have created with uh, Eternal Film Simulation, Japan has a nice uh, short 10-minute uh, film with uh, really cool to look at to see uh, where this camera is in video. But uh, uh, definitely for performance, for the still side of things, there's a lot of improvements to look at uh, with uh, the X-H1. Yeah, and, and I think one of the things, so we will repeat a little bit what Jordan and Chris talked about with yeah. you, which is, this is, uh, even for me, looking at it uh, from a spec point of view, because I have yet to get my own review copy, but it, this is truly the first uh, camera that I can say that will be equally as good in videos as well still. Some cameras that says, this is a stills camera that can do video well, this is kind of... Like the GH3, GH4, GH5, it is definitely video centric. You don't see too many guys shooting sports or weddings with it as a right. steels camera. Right. Now this started off obviously as a steels camera and it's a killer steels camera because a lot of the, and I'm pointing to the X-H1, but this is the X-T2. Yeah. And this is really what a lot of guys that shoot, that shot Nikon, that shot Canon, that shot Sony, uh, a lot of it is because of the lenses and the ecosystem. But they said, look, this is the first Fuji that can actually compete with the top end DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Yeah, so I, you think, got those guys. I think the balance of the X-T2 with the size of the body, but yeah. equally important, the size of the lens. Yeah. I think those two combinations is, is what the appeal of a lot of, you know, full frame DSLR shooters. They want to lighten the load, make it more compact. Yeah. And, uh, you know, having a full frame sensor, you can't really defeat the laws of physics, right? I mean, yeah. you want a very fast lenses. Those lenses will be quite large. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, this, I think, uh, provided the perfect balance for still as photographers. Yeah. And then, and, and then a year and a half ago, you sent out a little memo to, to media and ex-photographers about what we wanted to see in the future of right. the X. Yeah. And you actually kind of said, like, tell us. Uh, what other cameras are you looking at? What features do you like from these guys? And what do you wish for? And I think almost all of us said IBIS, yeah. one in-body stabilization. Yeah. 
And, and there's other little things, which we'll get into a little bit later, like the flashing light when the video is going. I'm just like, yes. Billy, if you don't have a fully articulating screen, at least let us YouTubers and one-man team guys can at least know when, if the video stops. Yeah. And, so, and little things like that. So we've added the tally lights to the yes. SH1. You have it fully configurable to be on, blinking, yes. the front, the rear, both, you name it. It's, yeah, all, it's all customizable. It's all, it's customizable yeah. in it for your choices. So yeah. uh, we did take uh, you know the feedback very serious from you guys, from, from Jordan, from the camera store, and from yeah. other videographers. Uh, you know, uh, quite a lot of features. There's still quite a lot of features list that we have to kind of check off. But you know, as we slowly check them off, you know, we and, and as we mature more and more, I think uh, you know Fujifilm is uh, you know a great company to be with, to invest with. I think. Uh, Definitely our lenses are one of the key points for a lot of people that move into our system. Amazing quality. We well, got the no one, no one, like no one has okay, so this is <laughs> the one thing when I talked about ecosystem. Yeah. Is as we talked about this last year in the video we shot Leo's camera supply. Yeah. So hey guys at Leo's. Um I have my own studio now, but I will visit you again soon. But at, last year I had mentioned I said, look, nobody out there has the technology to have said, hey, we make film. We make instant cameras, we make instant film, we make one hour labs, we make scanners, we make lenses, we make, like, nobody can say that they do everything. In the past, Kodak could have said it, but their cameras were kind of okay. You guys still make fantastic cameras, but uh, you guys are all encompassing. And now, if you are stills and video guys, hey, look, uh, uh, Fuji's video is okay, but I want to get access to better lenses. Well, here you go. You actually get right. professional yeah. level lenses now that are actually native mount. And one of the things that we talked about is the fact that this actually has the electronic contacts, right? So what, what the Sony, they have a... Yeah, e we have a, so we made actually an E-mount version. Of the 1855. Uh, of the 1855 as yeah. well as the, uh, the 5135. Yeah. And but does it have course, contacts? It doesn't have the contacts. No. So, you know, you don't have some of the, uh, the lens information that gets translated to improve image quality, things like, uh, you know, color shading. Um, and on top of that, of course, IBIS works well with the XH1. In order to be very effective, especially five axis, you need to know subject distance and- uh, For the know, shift. So, so for the information of the distance here gets translated, IBIS works quite well that way. Yeah, I mean, this, this lens is not a run and gun type lens, mm -hmm. but there is certain over the shoulder shots that are done shaky. And some scenes like, you know, in, um, Born the Born series, Born and Dead. Some yeah, of the fight yeah, sequences, yeah, yeah. they purposely make sure it's hand done. Yeah. I mean, you can do this and still have it stabilized, right. so you're not getting shake from the from you as right. a, as a videographer, yeah. and you still have to manually focus because these are not autofocus lenses. Correct. But they have IBIS for this as well as any adapted lenses, right? You're right. I mean, all the uh, the Fuji lenses that don't have OIS now have basically image stabilization. So yeah. one of my favorite lenses, the XF sixteen to fifty five. I know a lot of people were wanting that to have OIS and, uh, you know, taking XH1 and con connecting with the 16 to 55, you know, now you got this amazing quality lens with, you know, five stops of image stabilization, which, you know, for photo side of things, I think it's quite amazing, but also beneficially for video, for run and gun, you know, it is a much smaller version of the cine lens. So, I mean, you know, Fuji's uh, whole system wise, I think uh, lenses, um, is, is very key in buying into it. Uh, the fact that you know you still have dials and we still believe in dials because you know picking up the camera you feel a little bit more connected. The fact that you don't have to dive deep into menu system is, is great especially for the main exposure. You know you got your exposure triangle, your shutter speeds, your, your ISO and your aperture uh, and your, your comp dial here. Yeah. But of course on the XH1 we've changed that to, yes. to have a sub monitor because uh, we found that uh, you know having this quick glance information quite is quite useful, especially for video side of things. Yes. Because when you do toggle to the video, yes. you notice that the sub monitor displays yes. uh, video centric yeah. uh, uh, information. Yeah. Uh, that sub monitor is quite useful, and so it took up some space and uh, replaced, of course, the exposure uh, comp dial. But yeah. you know, but it's right it's, there. It's I actually, right there. I didn't like it at first because yeah. I thought it was exactly like the GFX, which we have here. Um, but this one you have to keep it pressed as well as turn and you're yeah. saying this is you can lock it so it's like a toggle exactly so yeah. it's configurable in the menu you can yeah. toggle, set it to toggle meaning you push one time yeah. and then you just will take command out of the way and you can like. you pick the front or the back uh, you can pick the front or the back nice so and you press it 
change it, and then press it back. So for me, I'm an aperture priority guy. I like the back for the aperture. Yes. So the aperture priority, and then you just like, uh, it's a bit over, yeah. press it once, shift it, press it again, locked in. Yeah. Nice. So that's Perfect. kind of nice. So I mean, it's not as bad as you think it is. I think yeah. if you get a chance to try it out. Your finger it's kind of almost, it's, it's right next it to the shutter button. Well, yeah. yeah, so it's actually nice and But there's so nice much spot. more benefit for having that little, you know, 1.28 inch, you know, sub monitor. Yes. Uh, and I think uh, a quick glance information, especially for the video part of it, uh, is is key. I mentioned to you one of the things I really like now is the, 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 the different menus comparison of uh, photo, and video yeah so if you're shooting photos um, and then you went into video and you started to adjust things like white balance it has its own separate menu for that yeah including the, the silent mode and everything's off screen yeah so you can turn on the silent mode and yeah. it ignores the, the, the all the, the, dials. the dials yeah and in essence you basically uh, have you know video settings completely different and control through the touch or the or the uh, the joystick on the back. Yeah, if you want to. Where if you want to control through the dials, you still can. You can. So if you want to shift the ISO manually, shift the shutter speed manually. Right. And I mean, you still manual on screen, but they want to see it on dials. Exactly. But but then if you want to change on the fly, guys, you right. don't want that because as you shift it, you're making noise. You can, the mic will probably shake a bit exactly. and pick up on I it. I mean, like I said again, not all video outfits change on the fly. However, you know, like if you're shooting photos and then you know you quickly want to jump to video, it's all ready. You, you don't have to then. Oh my God, I gotta switch my shutter speeds back to you yeah, know what's my ISO? One, one sixty of a second or yes. something again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Adjust my ISO. So that's kind or of the nice profile, thing. All that stuff, the profiles, all that is is whatever the the you set the screen on. Right. Nice. So that's why I like going back to having that sub monitor. I think uh, that you know to me is one of the. One of the best features now on it that you can quickly go Yeah, actually when it's off, you can sort of figure out what you want, but it tells you what what card slots in there because you can set this for slot two is video only. Right. So if you look down, you're like, oh, it's I don't have my video card in here. It tells you how many minutes are left in video, but if you have it turned off in stills mode, then it gives you the stills information that exactly. you want. So even at a quick glance, you could tell if you're in video or stills mode right. with the camera turned off. Now the camera, I, I think no one talks about it much, but it does have you know a dual slot, yeah. a high speed two cards. Yeah. Uh, in video mode, uh, of course, uh, the files will will transition automatically if one you know video, and all of a sudden you know my card fills up, and I have a second card in there, it automatically continues recording to the second card without any interruption. Interesting. So, with with the limit of in body fifteen minutes, with the booster thirty minutes. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean that we're talking about multiple scenes. You shoot, cut. Shoot, cut, right. shoot, That's cut. traditionally yeah. how you should be filming. And yeah. of course, if you want to extend that video footage, then of course you can use a 4K recorder. External and out, yeah. That's not going to limit yeah. you on the and, and, and with the booster, like the XC2, you can draw the AC power, which this comes with two, two batteries. Well, three batteries if yeah. you bundle it with the body. Yeah. So you get total three batteries with the AC adapter, which I use on the XC2 as a as a travel charger because it <laughs> charges two batteries at once, yeah. which the standard charger can't do. And if you are on site and you're shooting video, forget about wasting your battery, just plug in. Right, absolutely. Right? And, the, and the body itself is USB chargeable, just like the XT2, the USB 3 connector, yeah. of course, same thing, but of course, uh, uh, if you don't have a USB 3 cable, you can plug a standard USB 2 into that same slot, it yeah. only uses half the portion and uh, it still charges. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, that's great. And another thing people don't see yet, and we kind of talked about it before, was you know that uh, the XH1 uh, is tetherable. You know you can yes. tether it using XAcquire or using a W Lightroom plugin uh, for that. Uh, and it comes with this cable, this cable lock. Yes. Uh, there's a little uh, thread in the middle there that allows uh, on you this to, side, yeah. To, just uh, like the GFX. Just like the GFX, yeah. it really uh, attaches and holds the cable safe so that uh, you don't accidentally unplug and also it protects the ports from being ripped out of the camera. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so if you get the booster, as I mentioned, the X-T2 is very similar in that if you get it, you come with the two batteries. Yes, so the X-H1 comes as a body only option and there's also, of course, a body and vertical battery grip option. It's basically like this. So it's basically that. And if you get that, it's a total of three batteries as well as an AC adapter, which of course with the AC adapter, you can charge the two batteries in the grip yep. and you can plug a USB cable to the body and charge that. Uh, in body as well. In body. So and you can use an external charger to do that. You don't even need to plug in for that. Exactly. Which yeah. is great. 
And then uh, if you are shooting a lot of video, you can just have this plugged in full time and AC now it's just using it as an AC adapter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I think for an extra 400 bucks, I think it I is. I think it's great value. So the camera yeah. itself, uh, in terms of Canadian pricing, uh, of course, we're looking at 2450 And with the kit, 2800 So yeah. quite a good value uh, if you consider the two extra batteries and the AC adapter. Yeah, and, and also, again, looking at cameras that that try to, to say that, you know, like they do video well. I mean, in a way, it, it feels like it's, this is not video-centric. But at the same time, it has the, like we were talking about before, like the yeah. GH5 and the A7S2 is very video centric and I don't see too many stills guys buying it. This is a very capable stills camera because the DNA is from this and guys love this. But right. as you said, you sped up the algorithm for autofocus, so it actually can outperform the X-T2 in a lot of ways. Yeah, in terms of accuracy, in terms of low light focusing, in terms yeah. of, you know, uh, you know, High frequency, low contrast subjects like animals. Yeah. Uh, so you can kind of see that Fuji is trying to really improve it for sports photography, uh, for uh, wildlife photography. You know, I think X series in general handles a lot of the traditional style of photography. You know, travel, landscape, uh, portraits. But when it comes to action, when it comes to wildlife. You know, we're still trying to. To, to, to fill up those blanks. Yeah. Image quality wise, we have obviously the medium format GFX 50s yeah. to cover that portion exactly. of the of the the chart. And uh, now we're going to this high performance piece that's trying to fill it all. You know. Yeah. And aside from that, as a bonus, having this great video functionality, yeah. having you know great things like film simulation, so our color science from JPEGs going into the. Uh, the movie side of things is, is great. Yeah, the camera store uh, that the um, the video they shot, they had said that the co the colors are like some of the, the grading, uh, he didn't grade, but it looked like it was pre-graded because of the color yeah. science. He said, that's what I would have done. Like, I think it was a shadow roll off. Yeah. It's like, I would have done that in post and it's already done for me because right. of that eternal stuff. I mean, I'm sure he still tweaked it for yes, color yes, and, and stuff like that. Absolutely, but I think uh, having a nice base yeah. Uh, is there so they 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 filmed it uh, of course with a F log, yeah. uh, an external recorder, and then they applied a a, a beta LUT file that was for Eterna, yeah. uh, and then of course then uh, they color graded it a little bit on that, but uh, they did say that uh, they're very impressed with the color science yeah. from Fuji. Like for me, I would I wouldn't do F log because it's yeah. just for YouTube. <laughs> it's too much work for me. But that's why I love the Fuji for video because people were asking me how do you do color grading. It's like I didn't. I just yeah. used. Uh, I used uh, whatever classic chrome right, or something. Right, right. It's like whoa, it looks great. It's like no, I didn't do yeah, anything. Yeah, and now you it. use Eterna uh, yeah. built in, and, and you'll find that uh, you know you have this nice cinematic like look to to uh, your videos now. Yeah. So I think uh, personally for me, I'm I'm excited about this camera, and uh, you know uh, excited to to do some video side because I I do enjoy now the the video side of our camera. Yeah. I I thought uh, you know back in the days. You know, as we totally transition with, you know, the X-Pro 2, I thought video kept going better. Oh, yeah, for better sure. And better. And then now the X-H1, I think, is, is you know, quite a great uh, thing. Especially the high-speed shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can do 120 frames per second to in the camera. Yeah, HD. Um, I actually set up the uh, function buttons so that I can toggle quickly from 4K to that. Oh, nice. I didn't and, know you can um, do that toggle. And then by toggling to that, you know, I, I set it to five times slow-mo. Uh, and you know it works great, especially when I don't have to go back to the computer and start slowing footage down yeah, yeah, to my yeah. to my timeline. Right, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. there it's for already, me yeah. uh, to input right away. And so you know, as a YouTube content creator, uh, it just makes things a lot more simple. Well, if I want to shoot cinematic without putting that much effort, um, yeah. I would shoot seventeen by nine. I yeah. would shoot at the cinematic twenty four frames per second right. for your basic stuff, and I can actually shoot at one forty eighth of a second shutter speed. Right. Yeah. So you yeah. get the you get the the proper balance of of, of your frame rates, yeah. and then I would shoot not F log but Eterna with the the film simulation profile, yeah. and like eighty percent of my work's done. It is, and plus, you know, you got 12 stops of dynamic range yeah. in the video now, so yeah. you can actually set that up uh, in video. Yeah, yeah you can set this up to... To, to, to a what, what, whatever. 400%, yeah, which yeah. is about 12 stops, yeah. and uh, that's going to give you a lot more details in, in the highlights and shadows, so it can hold the details. So, yeah. so I'm excited yeah. I can go back and forth. <laughs> Not everyone is like... like a lot of people are either they're more stills or more video. I'm very balanced because I need to shoot YouTube videos, yeah. but I also... 
want to be a respectable photographer right. and to have a camera that does both well but as well that has an ecosystem that because a lot of guys with Sony are like oh Sony this Sony that right. but they're, they're adapting to other lenses so it's not a all-encompassing ecosystem. A lot of them will shoot Leica film cameras and have Leica lenses and then put that onto their Sony's, which it still works, but the problem is it's not an ecosystem. Right. Where this thing here, you can have an X-E3 for vlogging, it's light and simple, and you go on vacation, and then use that same lens, swap it onto this to shoot serious cinematic stuff. Right. Or if you have a, a gig and you need to rent something, I guess, where you can afford to buy it or justify yeah. to buy it, you can buy an actual cine it's the most lenses. Of, it's the most affordable cine lenses, right? Yeah. 5,000 for the 1855 yeah. uh, Canadian and uh, 5,500 for the 5135. Yeah. And of course it translates into US dollars uh, pretty similar. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, these are actually quite affordable and uh, uh, definitely still take our Fuji XF lenses and do great videos with them. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm actually know. looking forward to using some of the Fujicrons. The, the 35 F2, 23 yeah. F2, 50 F2, and really see how well those can do, like you said, the shallow depth of field stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As you can see, I'm relying heavily on, on daylight, so yeah. the sun just went behind the clouds here. And maybe this is kind of where we'll stop it because, you know, there's a lot of content out there on this right. and you're kind of blitzing this so wait for my long-term review as soon as Billy will send me a copy of the X-H1 and a lot of you guys know I have a lot of different I have video projects coming up documentaries and stuff so I think this is a perfect camera for a guy like me that wants to shoot serious stills and then switch over actually what one question I had is has anyone tried doing stills with this? It's not designed for stills. Well, no one has tried because it's not available. You know, okay. This is actually a prototype yeah. that I, I went to the LA launch uh, and uh, I brought uh, a set back, uh, which just directly came from Japan. And so, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I only had, um, you know, a few days with this as yeah. well. But I mean, 135 so. F2 point, can you shoot, is it 29 at 135? Yes, is it it's constant? a 2.9 constant. I yeah, I mean, that's so crazy. I can't shoot this, although it's manual focus. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's you know, going to give me, you know, great image quality. Yeah, right? I For love sure. it. For sure, absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. So I look, I look forward to doing stills with this, <laughs> as well as video, but as well just putting the standard Fuji XF lenses on here as well, yeah. with all the other benefits you're getting with this. It's, I mean, most YouTubers are using non-cinematic lenses anyways. Right. But the yeah. fact that someone could opt to rent one of these if they have a project, because there are cinematographers yeah, that freelance right. and they and can't afford the cinema lenses. I do want to be very serious. I mean, these cameras are quite serious to do that as well. I mean, yeah. you have that on, on an X-H1 yeah. or even on an X-T2, you have it all rigged out. Yeah. I think uh, you can definitely get some amazing shorts and, and docs. And, and you know, as you know, the camera store video showed you. I thought, I, I think that definitely could be a camera to be very serious about. I know the uh, the DP there uh, who filmed that was kind of excited, especially mm -hmm. the fact you know uh, the color science is being brought into the video side from yeah. Fuji. Uh, a lot of these guys, you know, the baseline is you know the Alexa cameras, yeah. and uh, you know having that similar look. I think people see that in the Fuji color science, yeah. and that's why you know it, it is quite a, uh, an exciting time. Uh, if you're looking into uh, into a camera like this, yeah, to do both video yeah. and stills e equally well, yeah, equally well, which that that's what I'm really excited. So thanks for watching, guys. Billy, thanks for coming to my yeah, my new my new studio here, <laughs> and then we look forward to the event tomorrow. There is another Fuji event where everyone else gets to to touch and play this, but I get to play with it first. And again, I just can't believe how oh, I'm in video mode here. I can't believe how smooth that shutter is. It is just. You guys, you have to, I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah, and then you, you take it one step and you add the uh, the electronic front curtain instead, then you'll yes. hear the one sound if it's, it's even more subtle. Yes, it, it, so, oh, I see. So is the front curtain not set up on this? Yeah, it's probably uh, not as default, as default as the mechanical shutter. But, but even uh, the mechanical shutter is, it's, it's, I mean, it's not threaded like the X-T2. So if you have a sexy, I mean, custom made in Japan brass, Soft, yeah, it's not gonna fit on here. Yeah, yeah. But but I mean this this has a nice feel. It feels really nice. It actually has a DSLR type feel to it. Yeah, it's the a new that, soft feather touch uh, yeah. uh, shutter and uh, makes it very easy to shoot a bunch of shots and and it's very silent as well. Yeah. And uh, of course the the IBIS system and and the whole shutter system. Yeah, has the, been it's been the, you know nicely uh, packed in and, and to keep the silence of the camera. The, the thicker body helps too to keep it... I mean, I have a 35 F2 on here <laughs> and I'm looking through here and it's just... 
perfectly stable. Is this no? There's no shifting. Or is is it on? Is it is you have it on full time, real time right now? Feels like it is. And you can and you can also shift the focus points by using the screen as well, yep. like the XE3, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, we got the sun coming back on. Oh, the sun's coming back on. It's okay. I have it on auto ISO. I never promote auto ISO on video. I mean, on stills, but on video, it's very helpful when you're shooting alone. So again, thank you, Billy, for coming on. Yeah, not a problem. And thank you for watching. And again, wait for my full review, long-term review of the new Fujifilm X-H1. So thanks for watching and happy. See, I just pressed that again accidentally. You gotta retrain your brain not to happy shooting. All right.